On the outskirts of Washington, D.C., patrolled night and day by an armed and uniformed guard, stands a government building, admittance to which is by special pass only, carefully checked. For this is the headquarters of David Harding, counter-spy. From here to every corner of the world go Harding's men on special duty. Counter-spies assigned to danger, they are actively protecting this country. One of these men, Don Martin, was stationed at a place not far from the small southwestern city of Croftona, located on a desolate 50 square mile tract of desert land owned by the federal government and run under military supervision. It was not an army post in the strictest sense of the term. Some 3,000 carefully screened civilians worked here, developing the super rockets and guided missiles, which form our first line of defense against attack. All the records of progress made were kept here in the central files a treasure house of top secret information, irresistible bait for those of our enemies working from within. Operator, give me long distance, please. Long distance? This is Don Martin, Central Files Division, Extension 24 in the Croft Toner Reservation. Get me Washington, D.C., Capital 1, 2, 3, 4. Reverse the charges. That's right. Thank you. Martin speaking. This is long distance. I have your Washington party. Go ahead, please. Headquarters, Martin calling Harding. I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Harding isn't here. Oh. Will you take my report on transcription, please? Go ahead, Mr. Martin. We are recording. It's Don Martin reporting. I think I finally located the information leak at Croftona, but I'm waiting for proof. If I'm right, this leak service is an extensive spy apparatus set up to relay our latest guided missile data out of the country. We'll need your help when the time comes to move in. We'll keep you closely advised. That is all. Martin. located the information leak at Croftona, but I'm waiting for proof. If I'm right, this leak services an extensive spy apparatus set up to relay our latest guided missile data out of the country. We'll need help when the time comes to move in. We'll keep you closely advised. That is all. Martin. Yes, Peters? The uh, coroner's report just came in, David. It confirms our own. At 11 o'clock yesterday morning, Don Martin was found in his apartment, a suicide, apparently from an overdose of sleeping tablets. But we've just heard Don's own recording. It isn't 12 hours old. A man doesn't get as close to the end of a job as he did and commit suicide. It just doesn't make sense. Yes? I have crossed on a few now, Mr. Harding. Reynolds is on the line. Reynolds? Reynolds, Harding speaking. We've just received the coroner's report you sent in on Don Martin. I see. When's the funeral? I want you to be there. Get a line on everybody who shows up. And Reynolds, have Colonel Kilgore put a double guard on that file room. Understand? Right. Make all arrangements and notify the airport. We're leaving for Croftona as soon as we can pack a bag. Okay, David.
get it to Doc Ritter right away. And keep your eye on that other fellow for me, will you? Right. Chief's been waiting for you. That's all. Pull it back to headquarters. Tell them we'll be here until further notice. Have some trouble? Yeah, had a little surprise, but we got what we went after. Doc Ritter's performing the autopsy now. Washington calling. Here we go. Harding speaking. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, I know. We're checking that now. Yes, of course I know how you feel about security at Croft Tone. Certainly. I'll keep you posted. Goodbye, sir. What about the funeral? Get anything there? Nice, sharp detail. Burton took it from the truck with the telescopic lens. That's Professor Schumann. He's working on control of long-range missiles. And beside him is his wife. He seemed to take it pretty hard. And the young lady standing next to Mrs. Schumann is Martha Holden's file clerk. Colonel Kilgore, Commandant of Proftona, you know. That's Karen Michelle. She was Martin's secretary. Who's that? I don't know, sir. Imagine he must have been a friend of Martin's. The minister is Dr. Grant, the post chaplain. After the services, I took a good look around so I could find the place later in the dark. We had no trouble getting by the watchman, finding the place. But just as we got near the grave, we heard the sound of somebody digging. I went ahead to take a look, and there was a guy with the same idea we had. Hey, what are you doing there? rough time with him until Burton and McCullough came up and gave me a hand. Uh, we quieted him down and locked him in the truck. Then we got the coffin up and brought it here, and also this man. He said he didn't want anybody to know we intended to perform an autopsy. That's right. Are you sure your man's not the unidentified one in this picture? No, sir, he isn't. Peters? Yes, sir. Have an enlargement made as marked. I want him identified. Have Burton and McCullough bring their man in. I want to take a look at the fellow who could do that to Bob Reynolds. Well, sir, you see, it was quite dark. Yeah, I know. And you probably tripped. It's quite an establishment. Body snatching must be lucrative business. <laughs> <laughs> David, <laughs> they never would have had me, you know, but it was dark So I've been told. Reynolds, shake hands with Simon Langton. Simon Langton? Well, that makes it a pleasure. It isn't every day we bring in the David Harding of England. Well, I'm glad my superintendent can't hear you. He thinks he is. Meet Burton and McCullough also, my staff. Hello. Hi. I have a feeling I'll never be allowed to live this down. Uh, now, while I'm around, Mr. Langton, <laughs> will I be also? Thanks, boys. Come on over and sit down, Simon. Your chief might have let me know you're in the country and what you intended doing. What are you doing, Crofton? Delivering a model of our new gyroscopic control to Colonel Kilgore. Professor Schumann asked to see it. Yes, Professor's working along those lines. My superintendent thought it advisable not to advertise the fact I was bringing it over. Since we discovered your guided missile information was leaking out to the continent, none of us over there have been sleeping nights. I haven't been sleeping so well these nights either. But you haven't told me what you were doing at the cemetery. <laughs> Making a fool of myself, apparently. I got into town yesterday. When I heard about the death of Martin, the fellow in charge of the files, I wanted to see for myself whether it actually was suicide. Any reason to suspect it wasn't? No, just overly concerned about anything touching on security of guarded missiles, really. But you have, David, or your men wouldn't have been at the cemetery tonight. Martin was one of my men. Before he died, he reported he discovered the leak we've been trying to find for months. I didn't know that. Nobody but Colonel Kilgore know about Martin. And now with Professor Schumann finally on the verge of perfecting the guidance of a practical long-range missile, I... Go ahead, Doc. Simon Langton, Scotland Yard. You do? Somebody went to a great deal of trouble to make it look like suicide. But it was murder. The sleeping pills found by Martin's bed were a prop. He was probably first drugged, then given a lethal dose of barbiturate in solution. 
I had to search for the evidence, but I found it. Such a method produces the same symptoms as death from an overdosage of pills. We'll keep this to ourselves for a while. Have the boys get the body back to the cemetery before daylight, will you, Doc? Yes, sir. But it's restricted material. You'll have to get clearance from Colonel Kilgore's office before we can let you have it. You're welcome. A requisition for the job, Miss Michelle. Will you sign it, please? Thanks, Jimmy. Tell Mr. Langton it's wet. I haven't got time to be doing these jobs over. Central Files, Miss Michelle. Yes, I'll tell him. Come in. Colonel Kilgore's office just called. The Colonel would like to see you as soon as possible. Professor Schumann is over there now. Oh, uh, just a moment. Would you mind telling me why you're applying for a transfer out of this section? My reasons are on the application. I'm finding the work too strenuous. Well, that's a pity. I don't know what I would have done this past week without you here to show me the ropes. I'm sure Martha or any of the girls could have done the same. I doubt it. My predecessor may have put in an excellent system here, but I'm sure it wasn't entirely without your help. And uh, I was sort of hoping you might do the same thing for me. I'm sorry. I'll have to ask you to put my request through channels. I hope you'll understand, Miss Michelle, but I won't be able to do that, for the time being, at least. Under orders from Colonel Kilgore, there are to be no transfers out of this section. Here's that stuff on turbojets the engineering lab ordered. How about lunch? Not today, thanks. Anything wrong, Karen? No, nothing. I have an appointment in town. If I don't get back this afternoon, take over for me, will you, Martha? Sure, honey. Have fun. Morning. Oh, good morning. Ah, Mr. Langton, it is good to see you again. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Langton, I want to thank you for bringing this instrument all the way here so that I might examine it. I found it highly interesting. Oh, my government is very happy to cooperate, Professor Schumann. Uh, but unfortunately, for my purposes, it represents a different approach to the problem. You see, I had hoped that an examination of this control for short-range missiles would make certain basic laboratory tests for my long-range control mechanism unnecessary. But it hasn't. As it stands, I have no choice now but to make those basic long-range tests as soon as possible. When will you be ready? I'll be ready in about 10 days. If it's all right with you, Colonel, I'd like to have Mr. Langton handle those test reports personally, for security reasons. Fine. Should you need any assistance, I'd suggest your secretary, Miss Michelle. She's cleared to handle classified and top secret material. Very well.
and proved controllable to target and remained accurately maneuverable during its entire time in the air. Bring a cup of water, please. Yes, Doctor. And how's the patient? Not very well, I'm afraid. Oh, I think we made great progress today. I finally succeeded in getting her to relive some of her concentration camp experiences. Then no wonder she feels the way she does. Oh, it isn't that. I had a splitting headache when I came in here because of a disappointment. I applied for a transfer to another section. It was denied. You applied for a transfer? <laughs> what on earth for? Because I can't stand working there any longer. Every time I look in that file room or in his office, I see Don Martin. I'd quit tomorrow, except I can't afford to lose my seniority. You can't afford to lose your health. You must stay and face things bravely, right in that same office, if we're to get you well again. I'm beginning to give up hope that will ever happen. That's foolish, my dear. You were making great strides before Don's unfortunate death. In time, you'll regain that ground, you'll see. But you must neither quit nor transfer. Promise you won't consider making such a move again without first discussing it with me. All right, Doctor. Next week at the same time? Right. Don't brood about anything, and we'll have you well again in no time. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye, my dear. I'll pick you up for dinner and a movie, maybe Friday night, okay? I'd love it. Bye, Barbara. Bye, Karen. I'm from the surgical supply company. What do you want the salt of violet lamp? Just a moment. Dr. Gilbert. Yes? Did you order an ultraviolet lamp from surgical supply? Why, no. That's funny. Look, Doc, I got the order right here in my book. That's Dr. Gibson on Market Street, not Gilbert on Maple. Well, what do you know? So it is. Sorry, Doc, my mistake. I didn't like what Karen said about that transfer business. I'll just have to keep talking her out of it. Also, I think she's getting tired of the length of time this treatment's taking. That's your problem. You brought her to me. It's your job to see that she keeps coming. Here. I'll see to it.
so suspicious. Have you any idea of the real reason Karen is so anxious to get that transfer? No, I'm just suspicious of the fact that very suddenly she's finding the work too strenuous, that's all. And she didn't come back this afternoon. She told one of the girls she had an appointment in town. Peters, yes, tell Mr. Langdon what you can of Karen Michelle's activities this afternoon. Karen Michelle left the administration building at 12.04 p.m. She boarded the 12.10 bus for Croft Owner at the reservation gate. The bus dropped her off in the corner of 5th and Maple. She walked north on Maple to number 309 and entered. This is a combination residence office and clinic used by a Dr. Victor Gilbert. She remained in there nearly two hours. Hold on a minute. Fields? Yes, sir. Got Gilbert's prints classified? Gilbert's? Yes. I want to find out all about that, boy. Nice work, Fields. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, what'll I do about the ultraviolet lamp? Perhaps you better send it to the children's hospital. Put me on the direct line of main headquarters. This is David Harding. Give me Johnson. Hello, Johnson. I want a routine check on a Dr. Victor Gilbert, now practicing here at number 309 Maple Street. Fingerprint classification 12, 030 over 124, W over W, 001 over 001. Got it? Right. Let me have anything you can dig up. Go on, Peters. Karen Michelle finally emerged from Dr. Gilbert's at 3.15 p.m. and took a cab on the corner of 5th and Maple to her home, number 927 Weatherly Avenue, arriving at 3.36 p.m. As of 7 p.m., 45 minutes ago, our latest report said she was still there. Thanks, Peters. Well, that certainly answers my question. <laughs> I'm having anyone who has any regular contact with that file section tailed. Maybe one of them will lead us to whatever it was Martin discovered. We haven't anything else to go on. So we pick them up in the morning and tuck them in at night. Including me? That might not be a bad idea, for your own protection. Incidentally, I'd like you to get friendly with Karen Michelle, outside the office. Oh, delighted, old boy. Perhaps you can find out why she needs the services of Dr. Victor Gilbert. Right, oh? Say, who's your pinup boy? Oh, that fellow? A hunch? An unidentified man who turned up to pay his respects at Martin's funeral. I've got Reynolds out hunting for him. Sorry, mister, I don't know. You might try the bottling works down the street. They got a lot of men working over there. Thanks, I will. Are you expecting someone? Trying to find this man. Do you know him? Never saw him before. Well, maybe he works here during the day. If he did, I'd know him. I'm on the day shift every two weeks. What do you want to see him about? Well, I'm from Acme Insurance. A friend of his died and left him some money. I've got to see that he gets it. Yeah? <laughs> some guys get all the breaks. Yeah, don't they, though? Well, listen, if you ever should show up around here, would you have him call Acme Insurance and ask for Reynolds? Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell him. Thanks. Thanks a lot. beating the neighborhood with that phony insurance story. To me, he's got cop written all over him. He could be dangerous. Somebody in the neighborhood's bound to remember seeing you in here. You can't take any chances now. The Schumann long range test will start in about a week. Go home and pack. I'll send Jimmy to you later with a ticket and instructions. All right. Paul, to Cork. You take over his wagon. You know what to do and where to go. I told him it was a mistake to go to Martin's funeral. 
That's one mistake too many. Jimmy. You go directly to the address in Buenos Aires and you receive your further instructions there. Here's your ticket, your money, your passport, and your new identification. Your name is Fred Holzman. You're a hardware salesman. I don't know anything about the hardware business. Well, that's just in case somebody asks you before you get down there. Yes, I've got them all now. Thanks. I'll wait. Miss Tabson, the fingerprints check. Get a dozen aliases, but Fred Holzman's a new one. Occupation hardware salesman. Our files have him as Paul Eisel, wanted for illegal entry. City morgue is still holding the body for identification, sir. Reynolds, give them all the alias information. Nobody will claim him now. We'll have to find a new lead. Looks as though someone shut him up before we could get to him. They did a good job of it. Yeah. Yes, Fields? This was received from Johnson by wire porter, sir. It's supposed to be a picture of Dr. Victor Gilbert. What do you mean, supposed to be? Well, that's not the face of the man whose fingerprints I took. Although Johnson insists that this photograph goes with those prints. You can't fake a fingerprint. This has got to be Gilbert. And so is this. I borrowed it from a local portrait gallery last night after the wire photo came in. This is a picture of the man I fingerprinted. This picture from Johnson was taken about 10 years ago. Now, what's this? We'll shade in right here. A little bit over here. Bring down the chin line. Over there, just a little bit more there. Now the hairline. There you are, sir. Who is he anyway? His real name is Hugo Boren, originally from Czechoslovakia. He immigrated to the United States in 1937. So far, that's all we have on him, except that he is not registered with any medical association as Boren or Gilbert. Have Johnson drop everything else to concentrate on this. Every scrap of information that could be dug up in this man's activity since he came here and before must be in our hands within the next 24 hours. Yes, sir. I want some more prints of these and uh, have some stereo slides made. Laboratory tests of the Schumann control mechanism indicate a possible range far in excess of 1,000 miles. This date, installation of the mechanism into an actual missile was begun. Installation should be completed by the 15th. Actual firing time has been set for 10 o'clock a.m. Dr. Gilbert, the man from the water company. That'll be fine, Mrs. Cleaver. 10.30 on Monday, then. Goodbye. Larry. Where's Paul? He was hot, so Miller sent him out of the country. To Buenos Aires? Well, he started for there. What time does the Michelle girl usually get here? On her lunch hour, every other Wednesday. I'll pick up on Wednesdays, then, same as Paul. What about this new boss she's got, this guy Langton? Miller wants to know. He's taken her out once or twice. From what I gather, he seems quite interested in her. Where'd he come from? Karen said he was working in England before here. In England? Doing what? I don't know. The same kind of civil service work, I guess. We'll call you as soon as we get any more information on him. No, stay off the phone, unless it's an emergency. speaking. Oh, hello, David. You just caught me. I was working late tonight. My secretary took the afternoon off again, and I was just trying to catch up. How's your private diagnosis coming? Making progress. I'm headed there now for dinner. See if you can't hurry it up. I've got to know why she's seeing that doctor. If I'm right, this may prove the break we've been looking for. 
Well, from what I've seen of her here in the office and on the outside, I'd be willing to swear by her. And incidentally, thanks for the assignment. I've never enjoyed one this much before. Goodbye. He's a federal agent. He's put in there to take Martin's place. And he's seeing the girl tonight at her home. Get over there. See what he's up to. Jimmy will be waiting to hear from you when you come out. All right. After tonight, I want you to take up every bit of free time that girl has. From now until the 15th, the day they'll test the Schumann controls. We must have that report. I understand. How much do you think Langton knows? It isn't what he knows. It's what he's liable to find out. Like the other one did. I don't intend to wait as long with Langton as we did with Martin. Dot and I were engaged to be married. I had no idea. You couldn't have known. No one did. I insisted on keeping it a secret. Do you mind if I ask why? Well, I wasn't sure of myself. I mean, I wasn't sure of myself mentally. Whenever I'm emotionally upset, I... I get severe headaches, and the pain is almost paralyzing. Don wanted to marry me, but I made up my mind against that until I could be cured. I wasn't expecting anyone. Excuse me, Simon. Why, Barbara. Hello, Karen. I saw your light and thought I'd drop in and see how you were. I'm all right. Come on in. I want you to meet someone. Oh, I didn't know you had company. It's my new chief of section. Barbara, this is Simon Langton, Barbara Taylor, my closest friend. How do you do? Hello. How about a cup of coffee? There's still some hot in the kitchen. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't stay. The doctor needs me for a case tonight. You know, Karen, you really should be in bed. You had a rough day today. Dr. Gilbert feels that Karen should have as much rest as possible. I was telling Simon about my headaches just before you came. Oh, are you interested in medicine, Mr. Langton? Well, only when I'm sick. Well, as Karen's nurse, as well as her friend, I hope you won't keep her up too late. I won't. I'm leaving very soon, as a matter of fact. Well, it's five minutes to ten. Correction, five after ten. Oh, thank you. I better trade this in on a new model. Well, I, I'd better be going. It was a pleasure meeting you, Mr. Langton. Nice meeting you, too, Miss Taylor. What about tomorrow night? Shall I pick you up at the office? All right, fine. Bye. Thanks for looking in, Barbara. Bye. Nice girl. Known her long? Mm-hmm. We met in Europe in a DP camp. We arrived in America together. I stayed in New York for a while, and she came out here to Croftona and went to work for Dr. Gilbert. They were instrumental in getting me the job at the reservation. And when you came out here, she took you to Dr. Gilbert for your headaches, huh? Yes. He's very thorough. When he couldn't find anything physically wrong with me, he decided to try psychiatric treatment. Oh? Oh, he doesn't specialize in it. But he decided my headaches stem from a mental block and inability to face my experiences during the war years. And by making me relive those experiences, he hopes to get rid of the block and the headaches with it. So that's why you're seeing Dr. Gilbert? Yes, of course. Why? Oh, I, I just meant that I understood what he was trying to accomplish. Well, it's getting late. I better be running along. Thanks for the dinner. It was wonderful. And thanks for the flowers. They're beautiful. Maybe we can get together again soon. I'd hmm? like it. Fine. Karen, since you were so close to Don Martin, do you know of any reason for him to have taken his own life? Please, I won't discuss it. I can't. Not with you or anyone. Good night, Simon. Forgive me. I didn't mean to. <gasps> hmm? My arm. When Dr. Gilbert gives me that solution treatment, it makes my arm sore. Oh, I see. I remember when I was vaccinated, my arm was sore for weeks. Good night, Karen. Good night. See you in the morning. Right.
Peters? Langton reporting. Tell Mr. Harding I'm coming in. I've got the information he wanted. And also tell him I think I know what it was that Martin discovered. Yes. Bye. Beg your pardon. My fault. Mr. Langton. Hi, Jimmy. Out for an airing? I live right around here. Uh, you walking very far? And just to where I can catch a cab. Well, there's a stand right around here, about a block from where I live. Oh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fellow don't mind that 12-mile bus ride back and forth from the plant every day, but it's the walk home from the bus that really gets you. I'll tell you, when you've been on your feet for 10 hours, it's murder. What? Oh. Yes, I, I suppose so. Well, it's different with men like you, Mr. Langton. You see, you spend a lot of time at your desk. Fellows like me, well, our job keeps us on our feet most of the time. And boy, we really feel it. Yes. It's funny my uh, running into you like this, isn't it, Jimmy? Well, Cough Tone is a small town, you know. Hey, drop that gun! How is he, Doc? Well, I can't find anything wrong with him that a scotch and soda wouldn't cure. Ah, that's the first civilized man I've found in your organization, David. Yeah, I'll get you one. Uh-uh, make it a double. No soda. <laughs> okay. What do you think of Simon's theory about Gilbert's treatment of the girl? It's possible. There are several hypnotic drugs which could enable a man to extract information from someone without that person's knowing anything about it afterwards. Well, I can't be positive, of course, but Gilbert could be getting the information out of her that way to stunt the Nazis used on our captured agents during the war. Besides, it's hard for me to believe that Karen is one of them. If she's innocent, she'll get all the breaks. I've already briefed Colonel Kilgore. Karen must take your place at the test. But there's still something about Martin's death she's not telling. That's the one thing that puzzles me. Here you are. Oh, thanks, Mac. That's okay. We turn the body over to the morgue with instructions to keep the whole matter confidential and out of the papers until further notice. Good. Well, I've had enough of one night. I'm hopping over to the hotel to get a good night's sleep. Go out and buy us some toilet articles and uh, fix them up at the bunk right here. Right. With your consent, you can find at these headquarters for the time being. Our friends wanted you out of the way. We'll do our best to oblige. After all, if I can't produce your life when this is over, Simon, how will I ever be able to face Scotland Yard? <laughs> Not a line. Nothing. But I'm positive he's dead. I felt the car hit him. And when I turned around, he was on the road still. And Jimmy? I don't know. You don't know? He could be alive. The police could be making him talk right now. But I swear, Miller, I didn't see a cop. Do you think I'm nuts? I'd never tried that stunt if, if cops were around. Well, where do you think the shots came from? Oh, that was afterwards. Jimmy was on the you run. You should have made sure of both of them. You're a clumsier fool than Paul. Jimmy must be dead. Let's hope they're both dead, for your sake. You want to see me, Colonel? Yes, Miss Michelle. Sit down, please. I'm afraid I've a shocking piece of news. Your chief of section, Mr. Langton, has suffered a severe automobile accident. He narrowly escaped death. He's in a coma. In fact, the doctors don't know whether he'll ever regain consciousness. I'm sorry I had to break it to you so abruptly, Miss Michelle, but it's sometimes better that way. Also, you had to know why I'm appointing you temporary chief of the file section. The Schumann controls are scheduled for range testing tomorrow morning. I must have someone handle those reports whom I know to be completely trustworthy. I can't do it. Well, I appreciate your feelings. However, I must insist that you take the assignment. I could tell Martha how to handle it. Martha isn't cleared for classified material. You are. You must be on hand for the Schumann control tests at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. If you'll allow me to say it in a kindly way, that's an order. All right, Colonel. I'll be there. As you can see, from the position of the Gilbert house, it's not going to be easy. There isn't too much cover. And the neighboring houses and buildings aren't as close to it as we could wish. Nevertheless, no one in that house, or in the neighborhood for that matter, must know what we're up to. One slip up, and we've lost the first crack we've had at these birds for months. On my request, Colonel Kilgore has had the test moved up to tomorrow morning. Wednesday the 14th at 10 a.m. 
so that the girl will go directly from the test to a regularly scheduled Wednesday appointment with Gilbert. If I'm right, she'll transmit the information to him then. I've got to know how she does that and what he does with it after he gets it. Now, let me make this very clear. From the minute Karen Michelle arrives at 309 Maple Street, everyone who goes in and comes out of that house has got the full report of the Schumann controls on him, until you prove otherwise. All right, let's have it. Let's have the slides in. This is Hugo Boren. The other slide. Alias, Dr. Victor Gilbert. Take a good look at him. Under no conditions is that man to be allowed to leave 309 Maple Street without being taken into immediate custody. It's 20 minutes past 12. That gives us exactly nine hours and 40 minutes to set up. Any questions? Then let's get started. Thanks, Ed. Doctor, there's something wrong with the lights. Neither this one nor the one in the closet works. Looks like the power is off. Call the power and light company and have them get right over. I've heard from Miller. The Schumann tests are being held this morning. That's all we're to wait for. As soon as he's received the report from us, he's leaving. We're getting out tonight. Information, will you give me the number of the Croft Toner Power and Light Company, please? You say the power is off all over the house? All right, we'll send someone out to take a look. Yes, ma'am, right away. Yeah. Wait till my boy hears about this. He wants to be a government agent. He's only seven. Oh? <laughs> well, I wouldn't mention anything about it to him till he's 12. Or to anyone else, for that matter. All right, I won't say a word. Good. Are you sure you won't need some of our own men or one of our trucks? Electricity's pretty tricky stuff, you know. We know. We've worked with it before. And we've got a truck of our own. Well, thanks for your cooperation. Not at all. I'll give you a call when we're finished. Forty-five seconds. Thirty seconds. Twenty seconds. Fifteen seconds. Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one.
A missile armed with atomic warhead was airborne at 10 a.m., reaching an altitude of 53 miles in 45 seconds before leveling off. Responding satisfactorily to the controls, the missile headed towards target, left the Pacific coast 62 seconds after leveling off, traveling at a speed of 5,000 miles per hour. Target destination 30 degrees north by 135 degrees west. Total distance to target 1,250 miles. Estimated traveling time 15 minutes. Powered by fuel formula 72LMR, ignited by radioactive pulsations striking ramjet motor of modified Viking type. The missile is fitted with gyroscope number 6413F. The 16 millimeter oscillator vibrating the response to shortwave frequencies at a ratio of 16 AX to 1300 over nine. Time, please. 10, 14, and 30 seconds. Only 30 seconds remaining, gentlemen. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Wonderful, marvelous. Your controls seem to have exceeded even our most optimistic speculations. My congratulations, Professor Schumann. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, Miss Michelle, please type that report at once and bring it directly to my office for forwarding to Washington. Uh, no copies, please. It's classified top secret. Yes, Colonel. Please get immediate word to Mr. Harding. Now, this completes my end of it. Well, thanks, Colonel. We'll take it from here. Bye. That was the Colonel, Mr. Langton. Karen Michelle has just finished the report, handed it in, and left the office. You uh, haven't much more time. Uh, notify Mr. Harding I'm ready and leaving here now. Give it to the Chief. Give it to Harding. Mr. Langton ready and now leaving here. All right, Peters. Reynolds is still inside, trying to find that short circuit. Tell Langton to wait until he gets McCullough's signal from the top of the pole, then go in. Right, sir. Harding to Fields. She'll be taking the bus out of there any minute now. Over. Fields to Harding. Roger. Okay, you can go and take that free ride. Harding to McCullough, are you set? Yes, sir. Without your okay, a grease sardine couldn't slip through this territory. That's fine, Mac. Stand by. Roger. Everything's okay now, miss. What was the trouble? There was overload. With all the appliances you've got in this place, the system broke down. We'll fix the connection on the main outside so your circuit will get enough juice to carry the load. Thanks. But uh, don't try to use all your electrical appliances at the same time, at least for the next couple of hours until we can make the adjustment. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Snap it up. The girls do here any minute. I've planted the Mike and Gilbert's inner room. We'll be ready as soon as I can make this connection to the transmitter.
Harding speaking. All right, she's here. Now let's keep alert. Fields. Yes, sir. Did she speak to anyone? No, sir. Danning sat beside her on the bus the whole trip. She made no contact on the street? No, sir. I tailed her from the bus here myself. Then stand by. Roger. Really, Mr. Wilbur, there's no point in your waiting. Oh, I don't mind, miss. I took the whole day off just to consult with the doctor. Besides, I've, uh, I've found a very interesting article in this uh, magazine here. 73. 72, 71, 70, 69, 68. She stopped. This morning at the reservation, they tested the Schumann controls. Yes. Who handled those reports? I did. Karen. You're sitting at your typewriter. You put in a sheet of paper. You set the margin. Now you're typing the Schumann report. You're typing it now. The missile armed with atomic warhead was airborne at 10 a.m., reaching an altitude of 53 miles in 45 seconds before leveling off, responding satisfactorily to the controls, the missile headed toward target. Anything else today? Just what was in the hamper. I got that. See you next week. Mr. Wilbur, the doctor's going to be quite a while. It's I all really right, don't... miss. I don't mind waiting. Yes, doctor. Right away. Fields, a laundry truck, license number 5560. He's all yours. Roger. But really, Mr. Wilbur, Dr. Gilbert isn't seeing any more patients today. Why don't you phone for an appointment tomorrow? I won't be in town tomorrow, nor all next week. I really only want a minute of his time. I'll just wait until his, his patient leaves, and you just ask him once more for me, eh? Very well, but you're wasting your time. my laundry. The company ain't gonna like this. Uncle Sam will take care of your company. Just relax and you'll get this all back rough dry before you leave, if we don't find anything wrong with it. Oh. Feeling better now, Karen? Much better, thanks. Shall I have Barbara call a cab for you? No, thanks, Doctor. I'll walk. I'd like the fresh air. You know, my dear, I'm very proud of you. You're showing a lot of courage. How do you mean? Well, under the circumstances of the accident, I realize how it must be affecting you. Simon? How did you hear about it? It wasn't in any of the papers. I was at the hospital early this morning to see a patient of mine. How is Simon? Colonel Kilgore said the doctors feel he might not regain consciousness. I really don't know, Karen. I didn't see him. I merely heard about it. I'm going over to the hospital yeah. right after I leave here. You're becoming quite fond of Langdon, aren't you? Yes. When my guilt feelings about Don let me. You'll forget about Don Martin in time. Perhaps. But he had no reason to take his own life. 
No reason but one. He begged me time and time again to be his wife, but I wouldn't. I refused him. We had a bitter quarrel, and I told him we were through. Three days later, he took those awful pills. I know it was my fault. I killed him, just as surely as if I put a gun to his head and pulled the trigger. There's no point in blaming yourself. Who else can I blame? In my book, that gives her a clean bill of health, Bob. Goodbye, Doctor. See you next Wednesday. Goodbye, Karen. Goodbye, Barbara. for a minute. It's the quickest way to get rid of him. All right, send him in. Just getting a little drink. The doctor will see you, but just for a moment. He has to go out in a case. Yes, Doctor. Mr. Wilbur, will you go right in, please? Dr. Gilbert, Mr. Wilbur. to Burton. Croft Owner Springs water truck leaving Gilbert's house now. Pick it up. It's all yours. Burton to Harding. Roger. It's very good of you to see me, Doctor. I've been sitting out uh, there... Please come to the point. I'm in quite a hurry. Uh, uh, it's about these headaches I've been having. Pardon me, please, but a special messenger just delivered this. You told me to bring it into you the moment it arrived, Doctor. And the hospital called and said you didn't have to hurry after all. Fine. Now I can spend more time on your case, Mr. Wilbur. Let's see, how long did you say you've been suffering from these headaches? Quite some time. I, I, it I might tried... be your eyes. Uh, let's step into the next room. I have a wall chart in there. We'll uh, see how well you can read it. Sit right here, please. Face the wall and um, look at this chart. I don't get it. Langton wasn't to go through any kind of an examination. Even letting Gilbert test his eyes is risky business with that makeup. Uh, he must have a reason. I was wondering, Doctor, if my headaches were not caused by something in my diet. The food or perhaps the water. I drink a lot of water. That's possible. After the eye examination, we'll go into that thoroughly. This is the desert, you know, and our tap water occasionally does contain certain impurities. As a matter of fact, the water has been tasting funny lately. I got the idea about the water, Doctor, while I was in your reception room out there. I, I, I saw a man come in with a full water bottle and leave with the empty water bottle. Maybe Langton's in trouble. Or something's gone wrong with our hookup. Yes, I, I'm glad we're discussing the water, Doctor. Because I was tempted to give that fellow an order for service in my home right there and then. But the uh, fellow left with the empty water bottle before I could make up my mind. You should have stopped him. Bottled water might be the answer. But what you're searching for is not in the water bottle. 
It's in the court, Mr. Langton. And Langton, just to disturb the long sleep you're going to have, your friends didn't hear a word about any water bottle. tell without going in there. But we can't go in. We can't afford to tip our hand yet. I wish we could hear something, anything. What's your report on that laundry man? We found nothing on him or in the laundry bundles. We let him go, sir. You ready to leave? But what about Langdon? I put him to sleep. Yes, but if he wakes I'll up, I'll make he... sure he won't. a whistle to me. I can't find a thing either. We've got to make him talk. He's got an awful load of that stuff in him. We can't get a word out of the girl and Gilbert's still out. What was on the recording? Nothing. No memo belt, no spool, nothing. We've searched everywhere. He's coming around. Uh, Simon, the recording, where is it? Boy, uh, truck. Water truck. Okay, my friend, sorry to have troubled you. You can go along now. Thanks. We better move our car. Cork. Bottle. Hello, garage. Peters. Hey, Peters. The chief's calling. Okay. Open the door. Yes, sir. Are you holding that water truck? We went all over the truck and found nothing. We searched the driver and he's okay too. We just let him go, sir. You what? Pick it up. The Schumann report is on that truck. On the truck? And that's where we found it, hidden in a cork but not before we'd examined every cork and every bottle on that truck. The driver led us to the bottling works, and Miller. When we took him, we learned we had a real prize, the brains of the apparatus in this country. From Miller, we got the address of Carl Herman in Buenos Aires, enabling the Argentine government to round up the remainder of the organization down there. Have I forgotten anything? No, I believe that covers it. I'll have a copy of the report ready for you in half an hour. That'll be too late. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> 
Our plane leaves in 20 minutes, Simon. Well, in that case, I'll mail it to you. Goodbye, Mrs. Langton. Have a pleasant journey. Thank you. Goodbye, Simon. Goodbye, David. We'll be looking forward to a visit from you one of these days. <laughs> Perhaps you'll be able to give us a hand with that. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs>